Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my setup for my bullet journal for the month of September 2020. I'm still in the bullet journal that I've been using since July and this is the Chuyu Culture Grid Diary in the B6 size that I had cut down to B6 size and I was putting it into this traveler's notebook but I did just take it out of the Traveler's Notebook just to show the cover that uh, I put here. And uh, this is a dashboard from Naomi Love Designs and it's their self-care dashboard. So I put it in here, I really like how it looks. But since I am moving out of this Traveler's Notebook and into a folio, I'm not gonna be able to use this anymore. So I thought I'd just show it off at the beginning um, because I think it looks pretty good. Now, I don't always show my setup every month in my bullet journal, just because it's pretty simple. I just pick a theme for each month, and then I pick some colors to go with that theme. Or, the, I do it the other way around, I pick some colors and then I kind of come up with a theme uh, to go with it. In September, I'm doing the exact same thing, but I did take it an extra step. So instead of writing out all of the headers of all of my collections, I made a sticker for it. We start off with a cover page. I do usually have a cover page for each month. And you'll see that this is probably one of those few items in the bullet journal setup where it's not actually a sticker. This is a piece of paper uh, that I just glued down, which, you know, is pretty much the same. The background here, this kind of blue outline with the the deco is from a site called freepick.com and they have a lot of graphics available if you search for them and some of them are free as long as you give credit so I will link freepick.com down below but what I did is I went there and I kind of edited the graphics so that I could add a calendar on top of it and I used a lot more of the graphics to make the rest of the stickers and then I also stuck a piece of tracing paper over it is a kind of overlay and I, I've noticed a lot of people do that and I quite enjoy it I did it also in August I took the design elements from the graphics that were made by Freepik like these lines these crosses these circles and then I kind of cop copied and pasted them onto here and I just like the kind of translucent overview uh, that you get over the cover page now this is purely decorative because I'm not really going to look at this that often it's just a calendar month and I do have it elsewhere uh, but I just it's just kind of fun to do and I also had this tracing paper on hand I did buy this thinking that tracing paper would be like vellum but it turns out it's a lot more thinner a lot more fragile uh, but that's pretty good because that means it won't add too much bulk to my planner okay so next we get into the collections so the collections that I have at the beginning of my bullet journal. And you'll see that now I'm starting to have a lot more stickers. This is a sticker, this is a sticker, and this is a sticker. The first part is the monthly task. So I will go through it and list all of the tasks that I have to complete by the end of the month. And I do have some items that I didn't finish in August that I'm going to carry forward into September. But you will see here the first one that I wrote down is that it says no by September. So I'm, I'm going to go on a no buy in September and no buy is also the same thing as a no spend. I just like to call it no buy. There I do have more monthly tasks which I will fill in later. And then on the same page I have a little section called waiting for. So waiting for is where I list down if I'm waiting for something in the mail to come in the mail then I'll write it down here or if I'm waiting to for someone to get back to me via email or phone call then I will also write that in here. And I've had this kind of setup uh, for a while now. Sometimes I have monthly tasks on one page and waiting for on the other page. I don't have that enough tasks to fill up an entire page and I don't have any waiting for items to fill up an entire page. Now next we get to this side. Uh, I do have some sticky notes here. I printed over the st sticky note and this template is from Sterling Ink. And it's just kind of like a basic uh, lined sticky note with a little column here, which I can use as a check mark. Now I did kind of print it upside down. Here's the sticky part and the 
place where you're supposed to write the title of the sticky note is at the back, but it doesn't uh, bother me so much and it's still pretty usable. So I do like to keep some sticky notes here uh, along with my monthly tasks. This social media uh, spread is kind of new to me. That is where I write down kind of all of the things that I've noticed on social media that I want to do follow up research on or comment on. And so here's a place for me to kind of write down the videos that I watch and what kind of my thoughts on them. And then I'll come back later and hopefully actually comment on the YouTube videos. You will notice that I do have some little squiggly lines here. Um, a little X and the circle. And again, this is kind of matching those shapes that you kind of find in the tracing paper. And I will try to use these throughout my bullet journal as a bit of decoration on top of the stickers. And this is kind of just my way of designating that there's a separation between the monthly task here and the waiting for here. And I've, I'll probably be experimenting. I might just draw a line or something instead of all these squiggly lines. And for this line, I'm using a fine liner. So it's a, from the brand Desserts, which is a store, a local store here. And um, it's just a typical fine liner. Next, we get into my no buy spread. What my no buy spread is, essentially, I cannot buy any non-essential purchases. That means, of course, all of the essential purchases like groceries or gas or utilities and things like that I have to purchase but the items that I purchase that I don't need to buy then I cannot buy them. It has an effective date of September 1st to September 30th and I just kind of uh, arbitrarily gave myself that date which is for one month. Now I should have put it over here but I forgot. This means I cannot purchase any of these types of items. I tried to list out things that I could possibly buy but it's not an all-inclusive list. Things like bullet journal and planner supplies, arts and craft supplies, that include pens, tube, inks, and so on. Snacks, which I really, really need to cut down on snacks. Clothes, shoes, accessories. And I haven't really purchased any clothes, shoes, or accessories in the past couple of months, but I put them here anyway. And beauty, skincare, and homewares. Next, we have the allowable purchases section. I list out what I can buy on top of the essential purchases. I can buy any replacements as long as I don't already own something similar. And the other allowable purchases is donations to charities. So next on this page, I do have another calendar. It's just a smaller version of this one. I'm going to cross out every day that I don't buy anything. It's just a good way for me to see uh, which days I did buy and which days I didn't buy. Now, if I kind of um, slip up and buy something, then you know, it depends. But I'm not going to be too hard on myself. But I, ideally, I really do want every day to be crossed out where I don't buy anything non-essential. And then lastly, I have a little section up here that says, remember. So first, I have to remember, why am I going on a no-buy? I, I am going on a no buy just because I know that I have a lot of items. It's not really for financial uh, reasons. I'm very grateful for the fact that I'm not doing this for financial reasons. Like I'm not um, for lack of money, but I just want to do it because I know that I have a lot of stuff. I also have to remember I have successfully done it before. I think that going on a no buy for a month at a time really works for me. It is a short enough amount of time for me to actually not purchase anything. And it makes me feel accomplished for doing it for one month. And I have done it before. And if I want to purchase anything else, it, it can wait. So this is just something for me to look at every time I cross out something here. Uh, just exactly why I'm doing this no buy. So we have another spread here. And this one is empty. And I haven't called it TMO. It's still under the no by September kind of spread. TMO stands for talk me out of or talk myself out of. So in this spread, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the things that I come across during the month that I might be tempted to buy or I might see something on sale 
or I might see something on a Instagram post or whatever it is. If I see it and I kind of feel like the urge I want to buy it, then one of the things that I do when I'm on a no buy and I see something like that is I'll write it down and I'll write down why I kind of want it and maybe why I shouldn't buy it. And the idea is to convince myself that it's okay, even though you see something, you like it, you might want it now, you don't need to have it right now. You could think about it for the future, or you could not buy it at all. And that's a kind of way for me to write down and talk myself out of buying the thing that I'm tempted by. Going back to the stickers, you'll see that for every page, what I like to do is I like to have the title of the page at the top. So this spread is a no buy spread so I have a sticker that says no buy September here and then on the right I have another sticker because on the kind of opposite side of that I usually like to have the date just so I when I'm flipping through that I know that it's uh, the spread for September and I do have that for September here as well and that's the end of my kind of monthly collections now we move on to the daily collections which is just a daily log I don't really do any weeklies, I just do dailies and I just follow a rapid log and I kind of just do it as I go. But for the sake of using stickers, what I do, did was I made a sticker for every day of the month. And to show you as an example, I decided to make it so that for my daily log, I will have one day per page just for the first week. Just so you can see what it kind of looks like. But uh, in reality, sometimes I have two pages per day. So if I were to do two pages per day, I would have put this sticker down here. For the week after this one and all the remaining weeks of the month, I have a sticker printed out and cut out already. And when I need to use those stickers, then I will put them in. So at the top, I have another sticker that says daily log. And then I have a date sticker that says September 2020, which is what I always do. When I got to this page and I laid down the sticker, it's one of those times where I realized I, might, I should have made a mock-up of this daily log page because this sticker is quite big and that means there's a lot of empty space here. When I was doing the previous spreads, I kind of decided to use the space here to write down my tasks and write down more information. When I came to this page, I'm so used to having the kind of date on the left side, the leftmost side, that I put it down here. On this page, I decided to put the sticker at the top so that now the wasted space will be kind of a little bit lower and then I'll start my daily log here. Whereas on the first, I'll be starting it here. That's something I didn't consider until I started putting down the sticker, but the good thing about it is the next day I can start over, I can use a new sticker and I can place it wherever I want. I'm gonna flip through the daily log of what I've done so far. You'll notice that I have two daily log stickers, which is, it says the same thing, but they have slightly different design. And the same with the date sticker. And this is just to give it a little bit more interesting things uh, as I flip through it. But I only have those two designs. And then once I'm on the next page, then it's kind of the same. Here we have the end of the first week of September. And now I'm going to show you more stickers that I made. Uh, stickers that I kind of tend to use in the subsections of my daily log because it's not all tasks and to-dos. It's also little bits of journaling in point form of things that happen during the day. And one of the sections that I have is called quota of the day. So I pre-wrote it here. It says, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change and I am changing the things I cannot accept. And this is from Angela Davis. So here I decided to draw some little squiggly lines and some shapes, same as all of the ones that you'll see throughout here and here. And I forgot to mention that I'm using another fine liner, uh, which is kind of this deep red color. It matches the font as close as I can get to these stickers here. And I have the gray fine liner as well. And then next, when I get to Monday, then we'll see how it goes. One other thing I should mention is I don't have any notes pages. I do like to take notes. 
Normally what I would do is if I have a page that's a daily log here and a daily log here and I need to take a note, I would just go to the next empty page and start writing the note. But of course for this first week, I'm doing a one page per day, so I can't have any notes until I get to the end of the week. And here is the end of the week and I can use whatever notes that I like. And I do have a sticker for a note. I'm going to take him out right now and I'll show you the rest of the stickers as well. So here at the back, I have this little kind of clear pocket and it's like a plastic pocket that I just glued in and it's a good place to put stickers. These are some sticker dots and these are the whole set of stickers that I made for September. And I'll go through them after, I'll go through these in a minute. Let's say I wanted to do a note for sometime during the week. And since I already have these kind of one page per day, then I'll just put it on the next available page. And I have a little note sticker here. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm thinking for this note page, there's going to be a little space here. And I'm going to write down the date of the note. I like to date my notes. And then on the right side of it, I'm going to write down the type of note that it is. So next we get to the rest of the stickers that I made that I'll show you. So back to the quote of the day. Sometimes I will have a quote of the day, which I do this kind of thing. I will also have something similar called thought of the day. So I made a sticker for that. The next sticker is in the news. If I read something newsworthy that I want to write down in my journal, something significant that happened that day, then I can use the sticker and then I can just write down what happened next to it. The th third sticker here is called Today I Learned and it's the hashtag TIL. That's usually how I refer to it. But Today I Learned is kind of a way for me to write down if I have learned a new factoid or a new fact, something interesting that I thought I would like to write down, then I will put the sticker there. And then this last one is the same quote of the day. Then I made a lot of, well, I made four extra notes stickers because I know that I take a lot of notes during the month. Now these are quite big. They're about the same size as the daily log. So eventually I decided that I had to make smaller versions of this. And here are more kind of daily log stickers for me to go through that I've pre-cut. But now we get to this part where this is now a kind of smaller version of these section, little subsections here. So here we have quote of day, which should match. And then, you know, today I learned thought of the day. I think I do like this size more um, because then it will give me more space on a page. And I have a couple of ones more cut out here. And then I have the rest of the stickers for each day of the month. So that's the flip through of what I'm doing for September 2020 in my bullet journal. I am going to be taking this out of the cover here and moving it into a new folio, which I will show you now. My folio for September is this Sojourner B6 sized folio and it's in the color Aqua and Lime. So it's a, got a kind of scoop pocket here. It, this is a blue, aqua blue color with a nubuck style finish. So it's a little bit of a velvety finish. And at the top front here, I have a little die cut, which I laminated and kind of stuck at an angle. So it does move a little bit. So I need to figure out how to keep it secure. But this little die cut I got recently and it's from Paper Echoes. I just thought it's really cute and has a little girl with a traveler's notebook on it. And you'll see now the girl has disappeared. So I really do have to secure this. Here we go. It's now in the future and I'm editing this video. I decided to cut out parts of my video where I talk about the process of making the stickers that were used in this setup. That includes things like how I designed the stickers, how I had to print them out, cut them out, the supplies I used, and I also talked a little bit about some 
using stickers for functional purposes as opposed to just for decoration or decorative purposes. If you're interested in learning about that, please let me know. I might put those thoughts into another video and show them there instead. If I had kept it in this video, the video would have been too long. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.